The Wright brothers didn't exactly create an immutable set of design instructions for the world when they took that first flight in 1903, and really, it wouldn't have mattered if they had. They had proven fly mechanics could work, and that was all that was necessary for the spirit of innovation to take hold in others. And look at us now, just over a century later, and we've produced over 150,000 different planes. Some of those have proven to be immensely popular, like the Cessna 172, of which 44,000 have been produced. But then there are those that never really escaped the prototype phase. Those aircraft that actually get into the air, but not production. Most were average and forgettable, but these 10 were absolutely incredible. Number 10. The Aerodyne Alexander Lippisch was a man with a dream and no desire to let the wisdom of the day keep him down. First flown in 1959, the Lippisch Aerodyne was what can be best described as a wingless plane. To look at it is to be baffled utterly, as it appears to be a giant jet engine and little else. The Aerodyne was a fluid-sustained and fluid-propelled aircraft. It achieved flight thanks to two coaxial propellers and flaps that were used to divert the slipstream so that it could fly up or down. Test flights were conducted with unmanned versions of the plane, and it worked. Piloted version was planned, but never implemented because there was no need for this kind of engineering, and the concept may have just been a little too far out. Number 9. The Nemeth Parasol What do you get when a biplane and a flying saucer have a baby? Well, that would be the Nemeth Parasol. Looking at this plane with modern eyes, you'd be forgiven for thinking there was no way it would get into the air, but you'd be wrong. The parasol did manage to get airborne. Described as a parachute plane, it used a massive round wing rather than the horizontal wings that we're used to in order to maintain flight. Stephen Nemeth, the inventor, claimed it was so easy to fly that you could master it in a tight 30 minutes even if you'd never flown a day in your life. Its maiden flight in 1934 saw it get up to 135 miles an hour, and then Nemeth stalled the engine. The result? Well, the parachute wing did exactly what its name suggests it should do. It gently floated down to the ground for a soft landing. Despite a successful test flight, no other parasols were ever built. The parachute wing caused considerable drag that made flying one inefficient compared to typical aircraft. Number 8. The Avrocar How fascinated were people with flying saucers in the 1950s? Well, Avro Canada's VZ9 Avrocar can adequately answer that. First designed by a Canadian firm in 1958 and then taken over by the United States military, this vehicle was 100% designed to look and function like a flying saucer. And the only thing weirder than the fact that it looked like a flying saucer was that it actually worked. The Avrocar functioned thanks to something called the Coenda effect. That's the same phenomenon that will keep a ping pong ball floating on a jet of air from your leaf blower. It's described as the tendency of fluid jet to stay attached to a convex surface, and it can make a saucer-shaped craft stay aloft. The plan was for the Avrocar to be a supersonic bomber capable of vertical takeoff and landing, and while it was capable of flight during tests, it proved to have serious issues with thrust and stability, making it unreliable. The project was abandoned in 1961. Number 7. The Vertical Flyer Also known as Snecma Cléopitière, this French craft was designed like a donut with a plane fuselage jammed in the hole. A single-person plane, the point was to take off and land vertically, thus eliminating the need for runways. The closed annular wing had the cockpit held inside of it, and it served as the power source, the frame, and the wing for the plane. And it worked. Though the pilot was sitting on little more than an ejector seat on top of a jet engine, that was all that was needed. The plane managed managed eight successful test flights, and it became so famous in France it even ended up in the comic book Tintin. But despite its relative success, it was not without issues. The lack of a delta wing meant it tended to slowly roll on its vertical axis and was hard to steer. The test pilot even called the speed indicator a fantasy. On the ninth test flight, things went from problematic to catastrophic. Horizontal flight was only briefly achieved, but the pilot lost control and had to eject. The plane crashed and all future tests were scrapped. Number 6. Vought V173 It's hard to have a lot of faith in something that was known as the flying pancake, but this goofy manta ray of the sky got the job done. A round fuselage flanked by two propellers, the Pancake took flight for the first time in 1942, utilizing a novel all-wing design that meant the entire plane created lift. The propellers on the plane were 16.5 feet in diameter, meaning that the plane had to sit at a 22-degree angle at rest, requiring the pilot to look out of a window in the floor to see what he was doing during takeoff or landing. After working out vibration issues, the plane was tested successfully in Connecticut in 1942 and 1943, which prompted a number of locals to call the authorities with UFO sightings. Test pilot Charles Lindbergh praised its ability and handling, and thanks to its massive propellers and wing design, it was capable of near-vertical takeoff. So why didn't it last? Well, the jet engine made it obsolete. No matter how efficient it was, it wasn't fast, and that meant 
it wasn't needed. Number five, Goodyear inflator plane. Balloons can fly, blimps can fly, and an inflatable plane can fly if you try hard enough to make it happen. Goodyear, the company famous for tires and their eponymous blimp, designed the inflator plane in much the way inflatable rafts are designed. Made from rubber, they needed to be inflated to its usable shape and then put in motion. It took five minutes to inflate and required less air pressure than a car tire. The plane seems silly when you first hear about it. Why would anyone want or need an inflatable rubber plane? But the idea was sound and even noble. The plan was to drop an inflator plane behind enemy lines as a rescue plane if a pilot was shot down. It could be inflated quickly and flown to safety. It was able to work on land or sea, and it was relatively cheap. While it wasn't breaking speed records, the inflator plane had a cruising speed of 60 miles per hour and a range of 390 miles, carrying 240 pounds. Tragically, one of the test pilots died during a flight when a control cable came loose and a piece of the wing frame hit the pilot in the head, knocking him from the craft. The project was ended shortly thereafter. Number 4. X-51 Wave Rider Even though the Boeing X-51 Wave Rider is an unmanned aircraft, it 100% deserves recognition for being one of the most amazing aircraft ever created. It was what's known as a scramjet, a type of aircraft that relies on supersonic airflow for propulsion. It was tested with little success starting in 2010, but in 2013 it completed a 6-minute flight including a 210-second run at Mach 5.1. That became the longest hypersonic flight ever. If you're not up to date on your Mach speed equivalents, Mach 5 occurs at just over 3,400 miles per hour. For comparison, the F-35 can hit about Mach 1.6 or 1,200 miles per hour. The Wave Rider was launched like a missile from another craft, in this case a B-52 Stratofort. It actually had no wings of its own and instead rides on its own shockwave, which is how it got its name. Because it was built as a means of demonstrating the technology rather than as a functional craft, it was never put into production after its test flights. Instead, the knowledge gained from what it did was applied to later designs for planes, surveillance systems, and weapons. Number 3. Solar Impulse Renewable energy is the way of the future, and while Tesla is leading the charge in terms of electric vehicles and solar power cells, the Swiss-made Solar Impulse put that technology to practical use by making a functional solar-powered plane. And it wasn't just a weak little butterfly-high puddle jump either. In July 2010, it flew for 26 straight hours, including 9 hours at night. The team built an improved version with 17,000 solar cells and better power systems and began a flight in March of 2015 that lasted all the way until July 2016. The journey began in Abu Dhabi and ended there as well. It was the first flight in history that traveled 26,000 miles around the entire globe in a plane powered by nothing more than solar energy at an average leisurely speed of only 45 miles per hour. Number 2. Bartini Beriev BVA-14 By now it should be clear that after mastering flight itself, mastering vertical takeoff was the main goal of nearly every plane designer in the world. The VVA-14 wanted to combine that with an aquatic plane that could be used by the Soviet Navy to monitor enemy submarines approaching Russia. In so many words, it was a flying boat that just so happened to look like a second-string Star Wars throwback. The original design featured inflatable pontoons and later rigid ones, and test flights were not a disappointment. It reached 32,000 feet, and they flew for over 1,500 miles. So far, so good. The problem was that the main feature of the plane was to vertically take off, and the designer of VTOL engines was never able to come through on it. Without that engine, that made it nothing more than a futuristic-looking aquaplane. It got off the grounds literally, but not figuratively, and the project was canned two years after its introduction, with barely more than 100 hours of flight time completed. Number 1. The HZ-1 Aerocycle Strictly speaking, no, this is not a plane. But it is an aircraft, and it did fly, and it boggles the mind to this day, 70 years after its creation. The HZ-1 Aerocycle was a personal helicopter designed to be used by pilots with no experience at all and only 20 minutes of instruction. It takes about that much time to figure out how to use an instant pot, and that doesn't have rotating blades or the ability to travel at 75 miles per hour. Despite the fact that the dual sets of blades would sometimes collide during flights and that they'd kick up rock shrapnel, the project was pursued very enthusiastically by the military. Twelve of these devices were built, outfitted with airbags to cushion an otherwise rocky landing, and they were successful enough until wind tunnel testing began. Subject to unstable conditions, these machines were unpredictable and suffered uncontrollable pitching. The idea was eventually scrapped for being too unreliable. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. And as always, thank you for watching.